Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and for the past six years, I have been eating a meat only carnivore diet. It's kind of wild to think about that March 18th, 2018, I started keto and then a few months later, I transitioned over to a full carnivore diet and I have never looked back. I lost 120 pounds. I've stabilized around that 100 pound weight loss and I have never been healthier and happier. In this video, I wanna share with you six lessons that I have learned over the last six years, things that maybe took some left turns, rough lessons that I had to learn and I wanna share those with you today. In addition, stay tuned to the end and I'll share with you one thing that I really wish I would have done from the very beginning that I really haven't done. Okay, let's jump right in with number one. The first lesson that I have learned over the last six years on a carnivore diet is that you can gain weight doing carnivore. Yes, a lot of people, myself included, eat a carnivore diet for weight loss. The food is so satisfying. The food is so nutritious that you naturally find that you're eating less. You are satisfied long enough that intermittent fasting is easier. You're getting protein, all of those things your body needs. So weight loss does come for a lot of people. And it was the primary tool along with some fasting that I used to lose those 100 pounds. A lot of us, those hunger signals are broken. I ended up over 263 pounds because those hunger signals in my body are broken. I don't have to be hungry to eat. So I could eat a huge portion for breakfast, a bacon and eggs, then I could sit down and have a steak for lunch. And yeah, I'm so satisfied and full that late at night, I'm not actually hungry, but there's still those emotional things inside of me that means I could eat. And so I have to set some boundaries on myself with intermittent fasting, with how often I eat, because it's still very easy for me to gain weight on a carnivore diet. Carnivore can be very helpful for regulating your appetite because of the satiety of the food. But not everybody can just eat when you're hungry and stop when you're full and have magical weight loss. Also, be mindful that the scale is not the best reflection for what's actually happening in your body. Take pictures, document the way that you feel. How is your sleep, your inflammation, your joint pain, your skin, your energy level? What else is happening in your body that's not being reflected on a scale? Make sure you're taking note of those things. Before we jump to number two, I wanna let you know that this video is sponsored by Element. Element is the electrolyte drink mix that I use on a regular basis. It is sodium, magnesium, and potassium, and it has that perfect combination of those ingredients that really helps to keep me hydrated. Your body can flush out a lot of natural electrolytes when you're just drinking water and you're not getting enough salt, especially when you're not eating carbs. It doesn't have anything to hang on to in your body. And so a salt-based electrolyte really can help with muscle muscle cramps, it can help prevent fatigue, headaches, and those other symptoms of carb withdrawal. I love the unflavored version because it doesn't have any sweeteners or flavorings, it's just those clean ingredients and no other junk, but the flavored versions like citrus and grapefruit are very popular in my house. To discover if you love the unflavored version like me or if you're more of a flavored person, you can get a free sample pack with your purchase. Element has a deal where if you go to drinkelement.com slash laurasbath or you click the link in the description, you can get a free sample pack and see which one you like best. Thanks to Element for sponsoring this video. The second lesson I have learned over the last six years eating carnivore is the importance of protein. And you would think like all you're eating is meat and eggs, of course you're gonna eat enough protein. It actually is very common for people to not be eating enough food in general or just not eating enough protein. I went through a period in 2019 where I was um, trying to eat one meal a day and I just wasn't getting in enough protein for the day and my hormones were suffering and my hair was falling out and I just was experiencing a lot of fatigue from under eating protein. So calculate your lean body mass. If we stripped all the fat off your body, what would you weigh? For me, that's probably around 120 to 130 pounds. I try to hit one gram of protein per pound of that lean body mass. So I want 120 to 140 grams of protein a day. And that's the, the grams in the meat, not the weight of the meat. And that protein is just gonna make sure that your body is getting enough nutrients to run all of its vital functions and maintain your good health as you're losing weight or looking to heal some autoimmune conditions. 
after that, the question is how much fat am I supposed to be eating? That is not as simple of an answer. I have no ratio for you on that. You can leverage your fat depending on your weight loss needs, if you're healing hormones, you might want to increase that fat. If you know, It's one of those things that I personally think is different day by day, depending on your needs and your activity level. Uh, as long as you're eating good fatty meat, you likely don't need to add an extra stick of butter to your ribeye. But if you're living on ground beef patties that are very lean, adding some extra fat might be important for you. Those are the things you can play around with over time. Okay, number three, I am sorry to say, but I am taking away your snacks. You do not need a snack on a carnivore diet. If you are hungry for a snack, one of two things is happening. Either you under ate at your last meal or you're having an emotional reaction. Dr. Sivas, I love, and that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned over the last six years is that a snack is always an emotional event. I never get up and go wander into the fridge and start looking for a piece of cheese out of hunger. I'm doing it because I'm bored, I'm stressed, I'm irritated, or for social reasons. The number of meals that you need to eat in order to get that protein that I mentioned might be one, two, or three, depending on your circumstances. But your body needs a break in between those meals to digest, to regulate its blood sugar, and you don't need to be snacking all day long. In the very beginning, if you are withdrawing from carbs and you're used to having those snacks, yeah, it's a better idea to have some hard boiled eggs or some beef jerky instead of having your typical pretzels or carbs in the afternoon. But over time, you should find that you can eat enough during your meals to not need a snack. The fourth lesson I have learned over the last six years is that the rules, these carnivore rules, they don't matter. I get messages constantly saying, can I have avocado? Can I have sauerkraut? Can I have cottage cheese? Like whether something is carnivore or not, it doesn't really matter. If you can have something, the two questions you should be asking yourself are, does this food negatively affect me? And does this food help me meet my goals? There are carnivore foods that might not help you hit your goals. I know so many people that can overeat on the brown butter bites, that eat a whole loaf of a carnivore bread. I could eat a whole brick of cheese in one sitting. Those foods might be considered carnivore, but they're not going to help me hit my goals because I can overeat them. There are also foods that are technically not carnivore. I eat spices on a regular basis. I know people who incorporate avocados or some fermented foods regularly. Correct, those are not technically carnivore. But are those foods negatively affecting you? And are those foods helping you hit your goals? If you can answer both of those questions with confidence, then great, have that food. This lifestyle is not about following a specific, perfect set of rules. It is about finding a lifestyle that you can sustain long-term that is gonna make you as healthy as possible. And yes, I do think understanding the definition of a carnivore diet is very helpful, especially if you are doing this as an elimination diet to heal an autoimmune condition. It's important to go down to that baseline carnivore in order to truly understand what foods are negatively affecting you. And I would highly recommend that you check out Judy Cho's new book, The Complete Carnivore Diet for Beginners. It's really gonna help you take this as an elimination diet and then how and when you can incorporate foods back in. There's some recipes that I contribute at the end of the book that might be helpful for you as well if you're getting started. So understanding that is important, but long-term, can I eat blank? I don't know. Does this food negatively affect you? And is this food helping you hit your goals? And don't worry so much about like if it's carnivore or not. And that kind of segues into the fifth lesson that I have learned over the last six years. And that's just don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. Sometimes, especially online, we see people obsessing about where they're getting their meat from, the sourcing, the is it carnivore, the way that they're doing carnivore, the ratios of things. Like none of that stuff matters long term. What really matters the most is can you stick to this in order to be consistent. Consistency always is gonna matter over perfection. And so while maybe some people do better on different macros, 
What matters the most is that you're sticking to this long term so that you can heal or lose weight or reach whatever health goals that you have. You need to eat the meat that you can afford. You need to eat the meat you enjoy and you need to have patience. I have gotten caught up in some of the more aggressive ways of doing carnivore and typically it led to me falling off and gaining some weight back because it wasn't sustainable. So slow and steady when it comes to weight loss on carnivore is something that's going to be more sustainable for you long term. We got to find a way to get off the roller coaster. And the same goes if you eat something that you regret or something that doesn't help you hit your goals, start over the next day. It one day is not going to throw you off, but letting yourself spiral out of shame and turn that into a three month issue where you gain back 20 pounds. Like I have done that so many times in my life and realizing that I just have to figure out how to be consistent is the most important thing. And the sixth lesson I have learned over the last six years is that carnivore is not a magic pill. I'm sorry to say, and, and honestly, that was a really hard one for me to grapple with. I kept waiting to like be perfect carnivore for long enough and then just wake up one day and have all my cravings disappear. And that didn't happen for me. And I also know a lot of people who are perfect carnivores. They are doing this perfectly and it still has not healed whatever health issues they're having. And that's okay. That doesn't mean the diet is wrong. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you are broken. It just means that like diet can't fix everything. I had to take a step back and start addressing my relationship with food. Why was I turning to food? What were the emotional reasons behind it? Carnivore took away a lot of cravings for me and it really helped me with satiety, which helped me to not overeat. But there's also this emotional component that I have really had to understand and work on fixing that had nothing to do with my diet and realizing that I wasn't doing anything wrong because all my cravings weren't going away was a big weight that was lifted off of my shoulders. And then I could start saying, why was I eating? What was triggering me? And I could start changing my habits, start changing my circumstances, stop putting myself in situations that I knew were going to cause me to eat foods that were not helpful for me. And I've learned different tools for coping instead of turning to food. There also may be health conditions that you're dealing with that diet alone can't fix. And that doesn't mean you're doing the diet wrong. Diet can fix a lot of things, but it's not going to fix everything. And you may have to work with a doctor, check out chronic inflammatory response syndrome. You may have to temporarily go on some type of medication. I believe that diet can fix a lot of things and prevent or help you get off of a lot of medications. But for us to just blindly say that it will fix everything, I think is doing a disservice to the other interventions that may be helpful for you. With your health and with your emotional issues with food, you have to get to the root cause. And both of those things may have nothing to do with diet. Okay, so that was six, but now I wanna share with you the one thing that I wish I would have been doing over the last six years more consistently, and that was just incorporating some type of movement. I had weight loss success without exercise. Then I kind of went crazy and tried to incorporate exercise in a way that wasn't sustainable for me. I just went too hard and it was too time consuming and I just, I went all in too to the extreme. <laughs> So I wish I would have baby stepped adding exercise. I wish I would have started going for a 10 minute walk after all my meals or doing some body weight exercises at home and then slowly worked it up so that exercise would have become more of a habit gradually over time. I still am not very consistent with exercise. It's something that I tend to kind of go all in with for a month or two and then life gets crazy and I back off. It's also kind of been my approach to protect myself because I really can't juggle diet and exercise all at the same time. And so when life gets crazy or life gets stressful, I focus on that one non-negotiable thing of just stay carnivore and don't eat carbs. And then the exercise goes out the window. So I really wish I would have found some way to balance that. And it's, it's a fight that I'm still battling right now. And I think it would have helped with if you're working to lower your blood glucose, going for walks, doing exercise can be really valuable for helping to burn off stored sugar. I think it's helpful for your mood, for your energy levels, and just for a sense of community. It's a way that you can gather with people in your life or your neighborhood and, and go for walks and enjoy some movement together. And it's something that our family is trying to get better at doing on a regular basis. So hopefully you can be better at that than I am, and I'm still working to incorporate those things.
I hope this video is helpful for you. If you want to talk more about that non-negotiable thing, if you want to have weekly live streams from me or see a lot of behind the scenes stuff or just hang out with that community of people who are going through the same thing you are, you can come find me on Locals. Thanks guys.